Hello and welcome to the Corporate Valuation course. My name is Nisha Kohli, a PhD in Finance and a Chartered Accountant having over 16 years of experience in teaching, training executives and consulting companies. My PhD was in the area of Corporate Governance and Valuations, which I completed about 12 years ago. Since then, I've been working in the area of Corporate Valuations. I was honored to develop background course material for corporate valuation course conducted by the CA Institute of India and have also published various articles and case studies in this area. I thought of sharing what I know to a wider audience through videos. So here I am. Let's begin and dive in. There's an ever increasing need for financial valuation services pertaining to public or non-public companies, subsidiaries and divisions and segments of public companies. There are many professionals who provide such services for valuing the companies. However, it is important to understand how they arrive at their estimates. Before we understand how businesses are valued, let's first understand why businesses are valued. This is also known as scoping for valuations. Our work will be greatly impacted because of the reason for valuation, as assumptions, estimates, and even approaches may differ in different contexts for valuations are done for. Mergers and acquisitions, IPOs, venture capital investments, private equity, and angel investing, buying a new business, selling an old business, solving litigation and ownership disputes, shareholder operation cases, employee stock options, financial reporting purposes, goodwill impairment, etc., etc. All these can be different contexts for valuation purposes. It can be done for any type of business, not necessarily a corporate form of business. An organization can be a limited or an unlimited form of company. It can be a limited liability or an unlimited liability of partnership. It can even be a trust or a sole proprietor. So, valuation can be done by any of these organizations. And these organizations can value anything right from any asset, shares, bonds, entire company stakeholding, for example, 100% shareholders, minority interests, intellectual property rights, such as patents, copyrights, and even goodwill. Okay, so now let's understand what is meant by value. So what do we value? How do we define value? In valuation theory, and according to the principles of valuation, there are different standards of value. So we define them in four different ways fair market value, investment value, intrinsic value, and fair value for financial reporting. Let's start with fair market value. Fair market value is the price at which the property would change hands between a willing and an able buyer to a willing or from a willing and an able seller, neither being under any compulsion to buy or sell, and both have reasonable knowledge and relevant facts. So, fair market value assumes an, an arm's length deal that the buyer and seller are able and willing. Therefore, we can define it as the price which is expressed in terms of cash and cash equivalents at which property would change hands between a hypothetical willing and able buyer and a hypothetical willing and able in an arm's length in an unrestricted market whether where neither is under compulsion to buy or sell and when both have reasonable knowledge of the relevant facts. Next standard of value is investment value. This identifies a particular buyer and a seller and that that particular buyer and a seller has his own attribute which he brings to the transaction. So, International Glossary defines investment value as the value to a particular investor based on his investment requirements and expectations. The best example would be 
an auction setting for a company in which let's say there are five different bidders attempting to purchase the company now let's talk about intrinsic value intrinsic value is based on fundamental analysis of companies particularly public traded companies so an amount an investor which he considers to be a true and a real worth is known as the fundamental value. Now this fundamental value is actually based on the future revenue or future income generating capacity of the company. That is why it's called intrinsic worth. Okay. So the last measure that we use is fair value for reporting purposes. Now this fair value for reporting purposes maybe for a going concern organization or for liquidation purpose now when it is used in in the for the liquidation purposes it's very close to the fair market value why because it doesn't have the impact of synergies but when we do when we use fair market value in our books of accounts and we consider an assumption of going concern what we are taking is we are actually assuming the future synergy of future benefits that can flow to the business right so that's why this 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 assumption of fair value which is considering the future impacts is closer to the investment value right so fair value for reporting purposes can be either closer to fair market value or it could be closer to investment value okay so now after this let's move to the premises of value now these premises are important because they are assumptions for valuation will be based on these premises one can assume that an organization is a going concern so if the organization is a going concern it will have a future revenue stream of right it will have a future income right so that future income or future revenue stream or you can say future cash flows will impact the value so the value will be what a business is expected to bring when it operates into into the future the intangible elements of going concern value will result from trained workforce, operational plan, or necessary license systems and procedures in place. Now, as regards the other assumption, that's the liquidation value, there are two types of liquidation value. One is orderly liquidation and the other one is forced liquidation. Orderly liquidation is defined as liquidation value at which assets are sold over reasonable period of time to maximize proceeds received. However, when we talk about forced liquidation method, in that case, the net amount that is realized is as if the business is terminated immediately and then the assets are sold piecemeal. So liquidation can be either orderly or forced. Some companies are worth more dead than alive when they don't have future revenue promising capacity. So it is important for the analyst, particularly when valuing an entire company, to determine if the going concern value exceeds the liquidation value. And then he has to choose an appropriate method of or approach of valuation, right? which we'll discuss in the next video. So the key points to keep in mind, price and cost can equal value, but not necessarily have an equal value. right? Furthermore, value is future looking. Although historical information can be used to set a value, the expectation of future economic benefit is the primary value driver. Investors buy tomorrow's cash flow, not yesterday's or even today's. See you in the next video.